never braised before. This is a braise new world for everybody. <laughs> that was terrible. After yesterday's adventures with uh, this little torch that I was attempting to use to braise the fuel sending unit, this one, we uh, took an adventure out to Home Depot and did the curbside pickup so we can stay safe. And I got myself uh, this guy. It's a burns o matic TS8000. And I'm gonna give this one a crack. The instructions say that it's super simple. So you make sure the gas is turned off. You make sure this thing's on lock. And you point it away from yourself. And you screw. two pieces together. You don't have to go too crazy with how tight it is. And then it says you slightly turn the gas on, unlock the thing, and light. And we are cooking with gas. So after a few uh, little learning tries, I managed to get the flux to reduce the oxidization on these two rods. And you actually have to get them red hot before the brazing will actually start melting. And we bought a, um, what did we buy? We bought, come on little bugger, focus. We bought a bronze brazing welding rod. But as you can see the the joint is like super strong. Is it still hot? No. Yeah, super strong. Uh, came up real nice, and I've given myself as much uh, distance of the overlap as I can to just increase the strength on this thing. And I mean, it's not going to be under any resistance, it's just going to hang inside the tank for the rest of its life. So, there you go. We're going to braise these two pieces together, and when you're uh, heating up anything that's close to something that uh, would potentially melt, you need to protect that. So, sometimes you can get little heat shields and things like that, but I don't have anything. And the easiest thing to use is a wet rag. So I'm going to wrap this plastic up with a wet rag and then that way that will keep the, the heat away from the plastic and stop me from melting it while I try and braise onto this little piece of metal here. get this perfectly on the on the right angle so I'm going to try and twist this piece of metal in the middle so I don't put too much stress on these joints here that I've just braised like so, so now it's perfectly in line and the angle of this and the angle of this is the same with any luck I haven't damaged this piece of plastic and it's still going to float and it's going to give us the fuel level from the inside. I'm just going to clean up the uh, brazing now. High five. pump assembly it goes into the tank one of the biggest reasons we're having to replace our fuel tank is because back when we got stuck you know where the little video goes in Massachusetts for the day this was our biggest problem this is our old fuel pump assembly from the old fuel tank and if you have a look at the top of it you can see how rusted it is and what actually happened was that this part here rusted and broke and there was the fuel was leaking from the top of the fuel pump 
So we weren't getting any consistent fuel supply to the engine. And it was a really big problem and we had like an amazing mechanic work for us for a whole day. And you can see he's actually uh, attempted to, to solder or braze the top of this for us. Uh, but we were still having problems with this and also all the little screws had rusted out. So basically this part is kind of dead. The reason we chose this Manafrey fuel tank is because you can order it with one of these. And this is a new fuel pump hanger that comes with all the parts needed. I just had to assemble it and I took some of the parts off our old one. Um, but this is 100% better and 100% uh, going to be more reliable than what we used to have in the old tank. sending unit and the fuel pump in pre-attached the uh, eight millimeter hose that's going to attach to the existing tube that we have coming out it was actually a repair by somebody else and with the new fuel tank there's two of these uh, vacuum lines that have to come out of the opposite side of the fuel tank so I'm going to pre-run the lines so that we can work out where not to get them tangled when we're reinstalling the tank and I've put the clips on before I put them on One's gonna go on the side like so. I'm just gonna put the other one. And I'm not sure whether I need this hose for something else. So I'm not gonna cut it until I'm sure. The other one goes on here. If I lift that timber, uh -huh. whether you can then slide this jack under. Right. Let's try that. Right? Now the tank's sort of sitting in, even though we don't know whether it's going to stay in or not. I'm just going to start finalizing a few of the connections because I don't want to um, keep the back of the car open. 
So this is the connector to the fuel sending unit. It looks a little bit dodgy on the inside, but it, it was working on the last one. So I'm just hoping this connection is going to be okay. If not, this access panel is actually easy to get to, so I can always open it up again. This is the electrical connector for the fuel pump. So that's actually pretty cool too. And then here's our out lead, which I uh, haven't connected on the other end yet. And then this is our original in lead, which I've already connected up. And I'm just going to tighten up the little uh, hose clamp here and then close all these things up and hopefully we don't have to return this tank. tank in but there are some brackets that are welded onto the fuel tank and there are brackets that you um, stick onto the car and those brackets are supposed to align with each other three out of the four of them align the final one that's right back here on the driver's side in the back is not aligning which is so annoying. So we've emailed Manafrey to see if they'll send us a new tank or if they have an answer to fixing this. So we'll, we'll see, I guess. Very frustrating. <laughs> So we spoke to Manafrey yesterday and we went back and forth with pictures and videos to show them what we were seeing and the issue that we were facing. And turns out there was an issue with the manufacturing and the tab on the fuel tank was placed in the wrong spot, which is why it didn't align with the car's holes. Um, unfortunately, they're really far. They're all the way in Nevada. So it would be a little difficult to get it figured out with a new tank and it would just take too long and we're trying to get on the road as soon as possible. So what's going to happen is we're going to figure it out, we're going to fix it and they're very kindly offering for us to get some credit for our next purchase or maybe they'll help hook us up with something in the future. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to drill new holes in the tabs that are already in the fuel tank and make sure those are aligned with the holes in the car and hopefully the fuel tank can stay where it is and it won't fall with new holes and everything is all okay. I think normally three tabs in a fuel tank would be okay but given the, the weight that this long range fuel tank is going to have we just want to make sure there's as many bolts to it as possible. That's right. Another adventure that we've been on today is the hoses that go from the fuel tank to the fuel filler and the fuel tank to the uh, breather. Uh, they're all too short. I don't know why. I don't know whether, I've never seen anyone writing about this before. Um, but our hoses are also really, really, really bad. They're all like kind of crusty and they're cracking. Uh, so I didn't want to really put these hoses back any, in any way, but I was going to if they fit. Uh, but they didn't fit. So I found on an IHEG Mart a list of someone's guesstimated sizes uh, of what they think these hoses are. We went on this adventure today to, we've been to four, three different, four different uh, auto, auto supply stores all the way up to Pompano Beach from Miami, which is like about an hour and a half drive, I think. Yeah. Uh, so all the way up in Pompano, we managed to find the big one, which replaces, which replaces this guy. So this guy was the only one that wasn't totally short but I've bent this a lot trying to get the old fuel tank out and I'm worried that I've cracked the plastic somewhere. So I thought it was just a better idea to get something that was 30 years newer. And uh, this one's kind of cool. It's got, it's ribbed with metal and it's actually a fuel filler hose, which is exactly what I'm 
trying to replace. Um, and then these are all different brands and different sizes. And I was trying to like, like I'm from Australia, so we use the metric system. So I was trying to like translate my metric measurements to inches and get someone to work it out. But these actually do have the millimeter sizes listed on them. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna install these today. And that will mean that the tank is completely hooked up. And once I put the new bolts through, we are good to go on the next break. So it's shot at him. We can just have that discussion alone. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't know it was Pompano. Is it like Pompano pump, Beach? Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach. Pompano I have no idea how to pronounce half the things in America. I'm pretty sure the Americans don't know how to pronounce anything. So like, I'm really not going to worry about that too much. <laughs> Next time on Nomad Effect. <laughs> <laughs>